Thank you for coming to this presentation. I'm uh, from the University of Tartu, Associate Professor of Educational Management. But before that, that's a quite long story about how I became a teacher educator and a person in educational policy in Estonia as well. Originally, I was trained as a researcher for Astronomy Institute in the university. But it was in Soviet time, and as additional qualification, we got teacher education also. And as Minister of Education in that time, cut the places in the research institutes. So a few days before state decision where to go to work after graduating the university, in front of my table there was a list of schools where to go. So I happened to be. Uh, teacher of physics and astronomy in Tartu, uh, upper secondary school. At the beginning, the decision was to keep it three years and then to go further on to the research field. But two years after starting, I was already vice principal of that school and uh, I decided to do work as good as, as I'm able to do. And I kept that school till 89, it was 8 years after that, came to the university and from that time I'm educating teachers, working with teacher education, school leadership, I've been in different commissions uh, evaluating teacher education curricula, developing some policy documents in the Republic and some other such kind of events. I've been involved in many international projects also. But about today's presentation, I, I know I'm a complicated person for the taping. I like to move <laughs> in the room, so it's not so easy to catch me on the picture. But um, uh, coming to today's presentation, then theoretically it can be delivered into four, four uh, periods. First of all, uh, past, past decade of independence of the Soviet Union period it's since 1990 to approximately 2000. Then second period, it's last decade from 2000 till today almost. Then something about current situation, what is going on today, what reforms we started and where we are with those reforms and changes in education. And then finally, what kind of trends we or me can, can see in Estonian education today and why I'm thinking that these things can go that direction. Let's start from the history. In Estonia we have expression who don't remember the history, that person is living without future. So we have to know something from our history also. Uh, speaking about 1990s and the beginning of that, this getting back our independence, it was in education also a major change of paradigm. Paradigm about understanding human being as a such and education as a such also. Because uh, new society needed entrepreneurial persons who are creative or active who like to take certain risks and uh, that needed person-centered education. Uh, personality became a central issue in educational spheres but we still had Soviet time educated teachers, we still had Soviet time curricula in schools, we still had Soviet time textbooks in schools but ideology was that even with that background, even with that materials and human resources, we have to change educational paradigm to another one, a new one. So that was first and biggest change in, in education that, that period. Uh, if we go to the administrative decision decisions, then before that all schools belonged to the state. 
the decision was that schools are owned by the local communities. Local communities became the school owners and what was the result? In a few years on the market there appeared almost 100 new schools. The last year of the Soviet Union we had in Estonia approximately 665 schools. Two years later on we had almost 750 schools in Estonia. Many new schools were opened. Why? Where was students coming, pupils coming? They just were redivided between existing schools. Yes, there was huge rise of birth rate the end of 80s, 86, 87, 88. There were quite many babies in families who had common tradition that at least three babies per family, per female, and then there were some songs and about that, that country should be fulfilled with babies and etc. But it was short term and five years later on birth rate went down almost to the half of that. But anyway, these approximately 100 new schools were opened and those schools started to work. Quite many of those were primary schools for three or four or five first years with few teachers and countryside area, quite often remembered, oh, 100 years ago in this village we had a school, we have to reopen it, to, to, to create it again. Most of these schools, newly uh, established schools, didn't survive for a long time, but at least there was hope of local people and certain values of local community what were accepted and funds and resources. Uh, spent for that purpose. Uh, another official issue what was done was compulsory school boards. Every school needed to have a school board. In the time there were a small number of schools which had so-called school board and most of those school boards were accommodated by the representatives of a small number of firms were like practice supporters or uh, so, some kind of partners to the school and real effect of those partners was that if school had wanted to have a nice last evening of the study year then okay you can use our basis and, and go to our sauna for one night and maybe we can pay your bill and that was it but now I, idea was that to great school board like it is working in the United States or, or in Australia where local people are coming together, there are representatives from different groups, stakeholders and they decide most important things about the school. What happened? These school boards were not taken as own bodies. People quite often said, oh, I don't have enough time to participate or to make my input into that school board. Okay, I can sign the decision what is made. Or principal, you know very well what is going on in school. What could be our best solution? Okay, principal gave best solution. Okay, I'm signed as a head of school board. Oh, do we need such kind of formal school board? Practically no. But that was the case. Then National curriculum was developed. It took a bit more time. The first national curriculum was accepted by our parliament in 1996. And uh, this national curriculum was some kind of mixture of previous Soviet curriculum and at the same time certain changes from new ideology and mostly from the historical side. The biggest change was that number of Exact sciences in the curriculum, lessons of exact sciences, was cut down, tremendously cut down, and number of historic lessons and literature lessons and some social sciences were added, and then it still was mainly adopted to the Soviet period textbooks, but private firms were already starting to develop our own textbooks which were meeting much better the curriculum needs and ideology what was in the curriculum. And 
maybe the biggest new thing what in that time we didn't consider as so important one it was computerization in education. I remember as vice principal of the school the real beginning of computerization in our school that we got a decision made by, by the Minister of Education uh, of Estonian Soviet Republic that in every school that should be taught some classes in computer sciences and that some programming should be done by children and something very basic skills should be developed but what was the problem? Not a single computer in the school. So we got some instructions, we got some paper, papers about that and first lessons about computers to the children were done just in an ordinary classroom without any computer, just on the paper. Okay, so that is how you know, a keyboard looks like. Here you theoretically can press on the keys and then computer will react to, to, to this uh, sufficient way. That was starting point. Now, I remember when I was a young person in, in the university, 1991, I guess, then uh, 402 was a very modern computer at that time. And then according to the special schedule, uh, I was able to use computer two hours, uh, was it Tuesday, and uh, maybe another two hours on uh, Thursday night. And it was in uh, university library. It was locked and very, very secure place. So to get to the computer, first of all, I went to the administrator, signed in. So there was special uh, password. Then they took off electronic uh, security system. I was able to get in and I was warned five minutes before your time is over, lock the door, come back to the administrator and then put it under signalization again. That was start, real start and real first meetings with computer for me. Uh, similar beginning was in ordinary schools. Uh, at the beginning of 90s I guess was quite similar here in Lithuania. Quite many old-fashioned computers as human uh, support, human help, uh, came to the schools. And visiting schools, sometimes we saw, oh, it's principal's office. What are boxes here? Oh, these are computers. And what computers? I don't know. It, it was sent to us and, and we were very happy with that. What you are going to do with those? We have to decide how long do you have those boxes here? Oh, they came quite recently, only two years. Okay, two years in the boxes, not in use computers. Yeah, really, really good human help, human support. But uh, quite soon it was discovered that such kind of computerization and that learning of computers, how to use and, and how to go into ICT is not working and Tiger Lake Foundation was established the, the second half of 90s and Tiger Lake Foundation there were some so called crazy persons who were real fans of computerization and somehow they got influenced the Minister of Education also so they were financed and their patron was president of the Republic, Lennart Meri, very much supported that foundation, uh, formally by fundings and mentally supporting and, and providing them always like a good example to follow. So Dalgar Lip Foundation got its own influence in the society. Through that uh, foundation quite many new brand new computers reached to the schools, different trainings were developed and really in schools appeared computer classes, appeared teachers who were able to manage with those computers, who were able to teach children those computers and even first computer textbooks, how, how to run computers, what, what to do with those and, and 
systems and about software and computers appeared in the market. So things went on, but it was still a little bit chaotic and it was very much influenced personalities. If I'm a strong person, I'm very much interested to run that direction, then okay, let's go after him and to that direction. Not, not general understandings or values what to follow. Uh, teachers in service training system itself was developed from Soviet time system to another time. We still kept in legislative acts rule that during five years, for four weeks, you should be in, in service training courses as a teacher. In Soviet time it meant that after every five years you had four weeks long service training course somewhere. It was changed that now that during five years you should pass in service training courses for 160 uh, hours. One week is 40 hours, 160 to divide to four, it means four weeks. But, but just accounting system was a little bit different. And another thing what was done that in service trainings became to be on free market. Everybody was able to offer in service training courses. Not only universities, not only official state-owned institutions, but everybody who qualified. And for qualification requirement was that you have a schooling license or as private person you have higher education. So, as a higher education person with higher education, I can register somewhere in database that I am like physical person, uh, having, having single person firm, and then I can offer courses. It, it meant that in few years there appeared almost, appeared almost 100 trainers, to teacher in service training market, huge competition and universities were not at all successful on that market. Uh, first uh, conclusions were done at the beginning of 2000, 2001, 2002, and then there were discovered that almost 5 to 7 percentage was covered by our university and another almost 5 to 7 percentage was covered by Tallinn Pedagogical University, no, Tallinn University and all the other in service training courses were covered by private firms or private persons running their own single person firms. Uh, financing of these in service training courses uh, was covered by the state and it was three percentage of teachers salary budget for in service training courses and schools were allowed it to use it only for in service training courses not for any other purpose. So it was quite strict rule. Then, at the same time, in uh, society, private firms developed, developed very fast. And to get better human resources, we spoke in previous discussions also, the salaries went up and up and up and up. Public sector paying salaries in schools, they were not able to rise so fast, teacher salaries. So kept between teacher salaries and salaries in private sector, it went bigger and bigger and bigger. What else? Uh, some foreign firms discovered that young teachers surviving for a few years in schools, two, three, three, four years, being quite successful, they are really good initiators to develop local filial of big international firm. So best persons in schools were attracted. Ah, oh, come into, into our firm. We, we can create our own filial and we are going to pay you double teacher salary or triple teacher salary for that. So quite several good teachers were attracted into private firms to run those filials and find staff and, and, and 
issues from, from other things going on in, in private business. Uh, what it meant for the school? Salaries are lower, best brains are leaving system, teachers, teachers' prestige went down, tremendously down when prestige in vocational education system. So the end of 1990s Estonian vocational schools were in very poor conditions, uh, quite weak, uh, human resources left in schools, their qualification mostly didn't meet requirements, physical environment was very poor and that was the moment when government had to make some decisions. Another one was problem area was related to Russian schools. Uh, at the beginning of 90s we had government formed by quite uh, right side uh, political forces. They called, uh, called themselves um, yeah, they were quite nationality uh, parties and uh, national values were very high in, in their presentations. And they were popular. And one of their uh, uh, slogans was that everybody should be taught in Estonia in Estonian language and we change all Russian schools to behave and study and learn in, in, in Estonia. And there was one deadline, first deadline set up it will happen for 1997. When we reached till 1997, it was postponed to 2000. When we reached till 2000, when it was again postponed. So, yeah, we discovered that there are problems with Russian schools, but we were not able to solve the problem. Problems with educational ideology. What are main ideas in education, what values we should follow, what are expectations. It was hard discussions period in, in education and quite many new ideas came on board but from one side these new ideas were attacked quite heavily from the others and messy discussions and, 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 and uh, conflicts between human beings and between even different groups were quite, quite many and quite often. And even uh, the Minister of Education wasn't able to provide any formal solution how to get over that and how to go further on. Uh, so sometimes ideological side in education went to the private institution, Jan Tennyson Institute, for example, in Tallinn, was one of the key players in 1990s in that sense. Uh, for today, it uh, has lost now that influence, but about 10 years ago it was still quite powerful in, in the field. What happened a few years later on? I would title it as, as a period of uh, systematic approach in improving our education. The end of 90s it was decided that we need good example to follow. There were several discussions about that, there were several decisions made and remade and finally we decided that Finland will be a good case for us. Strange uh, understanding was that uh, one, one quite important, uh, guided by one very important person, that maybe we even don't have to develop our own educational system, but we just take our Finnish system, we translate Finnish study materials, Finnish textbooks, workbooks, uh, close down Estonian teacher education and send Estonian teachers to study in Finnish universities. So everything Finnish and just import into Estonia. But uh, finally, uh, 
it, 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 it was understood that, that that is not going to work because our educational background was different, our economical background was different, and we were not able to survive just running Finnish system in Estonia. That didn't, wasn't, wasn't working at all. So Finnish system was considered as, as an example to follow, but to adapt to Estonian conditions. Then, uh, at the end of 1999-2000, teacher education was listed as priority, national priority, and it's still on the list. Uh, it means already for 12 years 